Hello and welcome to this video on factorising quadratics. Now a couple of things before we get started. Number one, it's really important that you make sure you're able to do a couple of pre-skills for this topic before we begin. So make sure that you can multiply with negatives, expand double brackets using a grid method because we'll be using that during today's video, factorise in simple expressions and finding factors of a given number. With that said, if you're okay with those, we'll get started. So what I've got up on the screen here is a quadratic expression given to you in two different ways. So on the left hand side is what we would call an expanded version and on the right hand side with the brackets is what we would call the factorized version. Now the easier skill is going from the right hand side to the left hand side and we call this expanding the brackets. As mentioned earlier, this is something that you could choose to use a grid method for. Going back the other way and actually putting those brackets in is what we're focusing on today and that's called factorizing. So in this example, we've started off with a really difficult, tricky first example. It's tricky because the x squared has a coefficient in front of it. So it's rather than just being 1x squared, it's 6x squared. So we're going to have a look and try and unpick this. What I've done is added to the screen a step-by-step -step guide that'll keep track of what we're doing every step through the calculation. So first of all, we need to write down our values for a, b, c, and a, c. And you can see just above the quadratic there, I've written in the general form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, that means that the number in front of the x squared, the number in front of the x, and the number out on the end are my a, b, and c values. The general form always has a positives in between the terms, but it's important that you keep the actual signs with them. So my c value, as you can see, is actually negative 6. The, th the fourth one that I'm going to look at is ac. And that's when I multiply A and C together. So in my example, that gives me negative 36. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is find factor pairs of this AC value. Now, it's really important that we include negatives in this one as well. So factor pairs of AC, I could have negative 1 times 36, negative 2 times 18, and so on and so on. And I can also flip those around to have positive 1 times negative 36, positive 2 times negative 18, and so on. So I've listed down all of the factors. I've tried to keep this in a really logical order as well, just to help me keep track of my working out as I'm going through this calculation. Step number three, I need to identify which pair will add together to give the value of b. So I can see that my value of b is positive five. So I need one of these factor pairs that add together to give positive five. And hopefully you can all see that that's the negative four times positive nine. When I do negative four and add positive nine to it, I end up with positive five. So what we're going to do now, and this is why it's really important that we use the grid method to expand these things so we get a feel for how it works, is we're going to try and rebuild what that grid would have looked like. Now the first value I'm going to put in is the 6x squared. That comes directly from the quadratic that I'm working with to start. And then the next value is the negative 6. And again, this is taken directly from my quadratic. The two values, top right and bottom left, are actually going to come from my factor pair. So I'm going to have 9x and negative 4x. So that's the step that I would call rebuilding the grid with the four values. The next thing we're going to do is to factorize one of the rows or one of the columns. Now it's totally your choice which one of these you factorize. You could factorize the top row all the way across. You could choose to factorize the bottom row all the way across or any of the columns that you want to. Personal preference here and whichever one you find easiest is going to take a big part of this. For me personally, I would try and stay away from any negatives for this first factorize. So I'm going to factorize the very first column, 6x squared and the positive 9x. And the highest common factor of that is 3x, which I'm going to write just on the outside of my grid. Once I've factorized one of the rows or columns, I'm actually going to switch the way I think about this to asking myself some multiplication-based questions, just to make this a little bit easier for me. So first of all, what would I have times by 3x to create 6x squared? Well, that would have to have been 2x. Once I've got that in place, I'm going to carry on that argument all the way through to be able to fill in the next one. So what did I times by 3x to make positive 9x? Must have been a positive 3. And what did I times by 2x to create negative 4x? Well, that must have been minus 2. The value of negative 6 in the bottom right hand corner, I can always use that as a bit of a guide just to make sure I'm on the right track. So does negative 2 times positive 3 create a negative 6? Yes, it does. So that gives me some confidence that what it is I'm doing is correct. Once I've got 
the grid with the top row and the far left column filled in. These become my brackets. I finally rebuilt those brackets outside the grid. So fully factorized, this is 2x plus 3 and 3x minus 2 in my separate brackets. Okay, here's one for you to have a go at. Again, this is not an easy version of this. It has a coefficient of 6 in front of the x squared, so that makes this a little bit trickier. Try and follow all six steps working through. Pause the video here. When you're ready to see what this one looks like, hit play, and I'll talk you through it. Okay, hopefully by now you've had a try on this one yourself, so let's start it off. Step number one, my a value is positive 6. My B value is negative 5. My C value is negative 4. That means that my AC value, 6 times negative 4, is negative 24. So let's tick that step off. Then I'm going to try and find factor pairs of negative 24. So for this one, I can have negative 1 times 24, negative 2 times 12. And again, it's really important to try and lay these out in a nice, logical way. Once I've exhausted all of the factor pairs where the first digit is negative, I'm just going to reverse this. So a positive 1 this time and a negative 24, a positive 2, a negative 12, positive 3, negative 8, and positive 4 with a negative 6. So let's tick that step 2 off. Step 3, identify which pair will add together to give the value of B. So B in my example is negative 5, so I need to find one of these factor pairs which will create negative 5 when I add them together. And hopefully, you would all agree that that's the positive 3 and the negative 8. So step 3, done. Then what we're going to do is we're going to try and rebuild the grid using the values that we've been given. So 6x squared, which comes directly from the equation, Negative 4, again, comes directly from the equation. And then the two values across this diagonal are going to come from my identified factor pair. So that's going to be 3x and negative 8x. Once I've done this, I need to decide on whether I'm going to factorize rows or columns, whichever one looks easiest. For me, I'm going to factorize across this first row. So the highest common factor of 6x squared and 3x is 3x. Once I've got that first one, that unlocks the problem for me. And I'm going to try and rebuild my brackets outside the grid. So what did I times by 3x to make 6x squared? That must have been 2x. What did I times by 3x to make 3x? Well, that has to be positive 1. And what did I times by 2x to make negative 8x? Well, that must have been negative 4. Again, I'm going to use this value just in the bottom right-hand corner to make sure that that works. So 1 times negative 4 does give me negative 4. So when I factorize this thing, it factorizes to a form which is 2x plus 1, 3x minus 4. Really well done if you got that one correct. It's not an easy example. Okay, so we've looked at a really tricky example with a coefficient of x squared where it's not equal to 1. In this case, now we're dialing it down a little bit. So the coefficient of x squared here is 1. So to have a look at this one, again, we're going to need to identify our a, b, c, and a, c values. Now, a in this case is 1, b in this case is 8, c, negative 20. a times c, 1 times negative 20, is negative 20. What we're going to do again is try and find the factor pairs of AC. So the factor pairs are going to be 1 times negative 20, 2 times negative 10, and 4 times negative 5. And then just like before, we're going to flip around the signs of those. Negative 1, positive 20, negative 2, positive 10, and negative 4 times positive 5. So that's step 2 done. Step three, we're going to identify which pair will add together to give the value of B. So B is over here and is positive 8. And what I'm going to need is a factor pair, which when I add them together gives me positive 8. So that's negative 2 and positive 10. So rebuilding the grid on this one, I'm going to have x squared from my very first term in the expression, negative 20 from the final term in that expression, and then the two terms across this diagonal negative 2x and 10x. Once I've rebuilt the grid, I need to factorize one of the rows or columns, whichever one appeals to me. So I'm going to factorize this very first column here. The highest common factor of x squared 
and 10x is just x. And then once I've done the initial factorization, I flip it around and I just ask myself some multiplication questions because generally I'm a little bit more confident with those. I know I'm not as likely to make a mistake. So what did I times by x to make x squared? Would have been an x. What did I times by x to make 10x? That would have been positive 10. And what did I times by x to make negative 2x? That would have been negative 2. Again, I'm just going to check this final value down here and make sure that there's nothing that looks like it's a mistake. And then this thing fully factorized, x minus 2, x plus 10. With any of these answers, once you've fully factorized it, a really good exam skill is to go back through and expand both those brackets back out again. Double check that you end up back at x squared plus 8x minus 20. Okay, here are four for you to have a go at. When you hit play on these, I'm just going to show you the answers because the working out for these does take up a significant amount of room. There's a mixture here of three of the more complicated ones and the second one you can see there has a coefficient of one in front of the x squared. So that one's a little bit easier for you to have a go at. Stick to the method, rewind the video if you need to see one of these again, hit pause now, try them yourself, good luck. Okay, so let's have a look at the solutions to these four when they are fully factorized. So the solutions are up on the screen. If you got all four of those, really well done. This is not an easy skill. If you struggled with one or more of them, then rewind the video, have another watch of the examples and try them through yourself and then come back to them and see if you can get to the final solution. So just to recap, we've talked about the step-by-step -step guide and this is not a quick process at all. Once you've done it a few times though, you will start to get quicker at it and a bit more confident at it. And in some cases, you will spot that there are some shortcuts to be taken with this method. This video is not focusing on that because it's really important that we get the step-by-step -step method correct before we start looking at those shortcuts. Couple of side notes, not all quadratic equations will factorize. It should be relatively clear from the exam question whether you're expected to factorize them. If ever they say, give your answer to two decimal places, they will not factorize. And also it's important to note, not all quadratics will actually solve. You need to take care with negatives in the expression, make sure that your directed number work is strong. And it's, as I said earlier, it's a really long process, but it will work every single time if you follow these six steps. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found that useful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.